In this video series, I am going to explain to you the key concepts related to Kubernetes by actually taking an example of an application stack and deploying that using Kubernetes. So this is what I have. This is the application that I want to deploy. Uh, and this is an e-commerce application which has a front-end application. It is made up of all these microservices which are interconnected. And this front-end application is written in Node.js. And the catalog, the actual catalog, the images and the products are served using another service that is catalog. This is created using a Golang and catalog uses MySQL as a database backend. The other service that we have is the carts. This is a shopping carts uh, service, which has, uh, which is a you know Java Spring Boot based application, which uses MongoDB as the backend. This is how the application looks like after it has been deployed. The, this is the front end, the scaffold that you see, and the products, the catalog, the you know the screens that you see here, all are served out of the catalog application. And then once the carts application is deployed, you will see a shopping cart appear on uh, this part of the screen as well. Now this is what we have to deploy using Kubernetes. Now what I already have is obviously the source code. So the source code is available. It's been written for each of the application there is a repository this is for the front end there's one for the catalog one for the carts application and uh, so on and so forth apart from that to deploy these application the first step is to write the docker files and the docker files for all of these applications have been written and using the docker files i already have created um, the images as well which have been published here so for each of the application that includes let's say front end catalog carts um, there is a respective docker image in fact catalog has two components one is the database one is the application each of that in turn has its own image so the prerequisite before we start deploying it on Kubernetes is the images have to be available somewhere on the registry. And this is a public registry that is Docker Hub. Uh, apart from that, to compile, before I start building the images, I have already created the pipelines for each of the application. This is one example pipeline for the Cards application. So the Cards application goes through the continuous integration on this Jenkins platform where it goes through the tests. So I have a pipeline stages which are build, test and package. It creates an artifact which is a jar file and uh, apart from that, there's another job which creates and publishes the image to Docker in, in an automated way. So this is what happens whenever I make a change. It goes through the continuous integration process. If everything is okay, it publishes the image on the Docker Hub here. And this is exactly what I start to deploy. I want to deploy at scale in a with Kubernetes. And that is where I'm going to need Kubernetes. Now, first of all, what is the need and the purpose of uh, using Kubernetes? Why do we need it is what we're going to look at in this video. Now, if I want to deploy these container images, I already have the images uh, created. And the way I run those images is if I have just one single machine, I could use Docker and uh, run that as a container using Docker run command. Or let's say I have a stack of application, which is uh, front end cards catalog. That's one example here. I could use Docker compose and run it along on one machine in an automated way using just one command that is Docker compose up hyphen D. Now in, in either of these situations, either use doc, either using Docker or Docker compose, I am still restricted to just one machine. It can help you to automate or run the containers on one single host. Now, the problem with that is beyond development, for development it's okay, for local development it's okay, but beyond development, you're not gonna have one node to run the containers on. You'll probably have a data center environment with um, you know 50 different nodes or more than, definitely more than one node that you want to run the containers on. Containers also follow the you know immutable deployment, which means that every time there's an update, there's a change, you don't go and connect to a container and upgrade the application on it. You replace the container with a new one, which also means a new deployment every time. Now, the situation is I have a group of servers and a, a group of containers to be scheduled or to be run on those. Now, my problem here is 
how do I decide? The first problem that I have is how do I decide which container runs on which host? Now, in order to make that decision, I need to first know the resource utilization on each of these machines. Imagine you are uh, in charge of running these containers and you have like hundreds, hundred of, uh, let's say you have hundred hosts and you want to run, let's say 50 different containers um, in, in one hour. Now, when, when you want to launch those containers, you need to know which machines have a right to run that type of container because some of these containers might need specific, uh, you know, resource requirements. Um, meaning it might have a specific amount of memory, CPU, etc., uh, or even, you know, IO requirements and so on. So uh, based on the resources needed, based on the availability, you will have to start making that decision. Imagine doing making that decision probably, you know, 50 different times a day. That can get really, really daunting because you'll have to keep monitoring these nodes and you'll have to make that decision manually, which will also take time, which can be dependent on a human. So if you're sleeping nobody's there to run those containers and so on right so that's not a good position to be in and this is not a manual work anyways because you can program a application which does that decision on your own and that's the first thing that you know that kubernetes does that's the primary thing that kubernetes is useful for and not only kubernetes any container orchestration engine does that so it takes a bunch of servers converts it into one logical entity one cluster and on that cluster you start running your application so suddenly your job becomes easier because now you're not talking to 100 machines you're talking to just one single entity and you submit the jobs to that entity that entity the, in this case it's kubernetes is uh, resource aware it knows the resource availability on each of the nodes it can make the intelligent decisions you can it is programmed to you know select the right node for the uh, you know for the container that you provide based on the resource requirements and based on availability so the first thing that a container orchestration engine does is the clustering of the nodes and the second thing that it does is scheduling. Those are two most important aspects of a COE or a container orchestration engine. Now, apart from this, Kubernetes is capable of uh, scaling your applications and uh, nodes and, uh, you know, uh, load balancing. Uh, pro it provides fault tolerant out of the box. It gives you a way to create your application deployment, etc. And for all of these reasons, you are going to need a container orchestration engine. So to simply put anything beyond development that you want to run your applications and containers on, you are going to need a container orchestration engine such as Kubernetes. And that is the primary role of Kubernetes. And that's the most key part uh, here to understand about why you need Kubernetes.